the runner-up Best in Show Beer at the 11th Annual Festival of Wooden Barrel Age Beer is Backyard Ride Bourbon County Brand Stuff from the Gustav Beer Company. For a lot of Chicagoans, including me, Goose Island was a gateway beer into craft. And I think it just introduced a lot of Chicagoans to the more interesting things that beer could be. We were here way too early. We got here at 8 o'clock last night. We came down for the release. Been fans of Goose Island for a long time. We figured there'd be someone else here, but there was So we're the crazy ones. <laughs> They can't be Bourbon County. It takes a as staple. Much as we can carry. I know that's yeah. why it's over here. For uh, it's Bourbon County. Everybody knows that name. Everybody knows. There were some earlier attempts to start craft breweries in Chicago, but Goose Island has been the, the, the stalwart and survivor, and also the originator of of beers like this. We were the first brewery to, to uh, make a uh, commercially available beer that was aged in a bourbon barrel. Goose Island, I think you can trace pretty much everything that's happening in craft beer in Chicago back to them. They opened in, I think it was 88, and almost immediately they started hosting uh, gatherings that encouraged people, beer collectors, beer drinkers, to come and try what Goose Island was making, but also to bring in stuff from their own collections, their own homebrew. We like to say once you go craft, you don't go back. So once people start drinking craft beer, it's not like you know, you're know you gonna turn in your 50s and say, I'm gonna go back to Miller Lite. <laughs> uh, so Chicago's really been incubating the scene for a long time, but uh, obviously the scope and the size is what's changing. The brewing scene in Chicago is as diverse as the city itself. Not only do you have local local breweries and local beers and local pubs everywhere, <laughs> but they all have their own like theme or their own like shtick. Like Metropolitan, they make lagers. Um, Goose Island was traditionally for a long time a lot of English style beers. Half Acre, Revolution, Beguile, uh, Spiteful, Peace. Uh, <laughs> Did I say revolution? I think I did. Uh, I think there's probably six more since we started this conversation. Um, I, I've lost track. It's interesting because two years ago when I, I started getting really serious about doing this, there were, you know, probably 30 fewer breweries in <laughs> in Chicago. So, um, yeah, it's been interesting to see everything grow. I'm an architect, and I had a two-person practice, and so because of the downturn, since we mostly did residential projects, um, yeah, we had a lot more free time on our hands, <laughs> which is, was good for uh, introspection. It, temperance kind of came from. A little selfishness in my, on my part because I wanted a brewery in Evanston and nobody else was doing it. Uh, although I think unlike a lot of home brewers turned uh, brewers or brewery owners, I always knew that I was not going to be the head brewer. So what happens is, is that this creates, it's like a bottle and it's going to create, it's going to keep that beer in there with the carbon, the carbon dioxide in there. I started home brewing you know, in college, and then started brewing professionally in about a couple years ago at Goose Island. And Shauna, do you wanna come hand me these buckets? Josh Gilbert actually came and approached me, I would say about a year ago from now, um, and he, you know, said, I wanna open up this brewery, I wanna to talk to you about it. And I just figured, you know, he wanted to talk about and he just wanted a tour of Goose Island. But then, you know, after he asked me to come brew with him, 
that's when I was like, oh wow, this is gonna be great. He said, I'm so confident in you. I know you can do it. The way that you talk about beer, it's so passionate. Tastes great. It looks okay, but you're gonna, you can do a little bit more, because you can always do more. Beautiful. Finish. Tastes good. There's only one problem. We're not getting 40 barrels. You never are gonna get 40 barrels, though. There's always, because... I want more. Yeah, I know. When I first started, I got to know like the folks at uh, Metropolitan and Half Acre and uh, Revolution, and um, they were all really helpful. I love the community. I love beer. Um, I love the bars and restaurants that carry us. It's a lot of hard work, but it's more than worth it to be part of the beer community. Well, in 1999, there was Goose Island, but there, there wasn't quite as much focus on craft beer in the city. Um, I thought maybe it was time to bring some breweries back, seeing as once there were 50 here. The way we make beer is the way that you would make it as a home brewer. It's the way the big guys make it. Uh, essentially, a pretty simple process. We use four ingredients, malted barley, water, yeast, and hops. What we do is we take the malted barley, crack it open, and mix it with hot water. Enzymes in the malt become active at the hot, in the high temperatures, and they break the starch in the grain. The grain's starchy, and the starch gets broken down into uh, simpler sugars. We then run the liquid, which we call wort, unfermented beer, W-O-R-T, is wort, and we run that into the kettle and boil it where we add uh, the third ingredient, which is hops. Uh, hops provide bitterness, spiciness, and aroma to the beer. And then we cool the wort down after boiling it and run it into a fermentation tank where we add the fourth ingredient, which is yeast. And yeast uh, metabolizes those sugars that are in the wort and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. The alcohol stays in the beer, and that's why we like it. And the carbon dioxide, some of it stays in the beer and uh, creates the carbonation in the bubbles in the beer. Macro breweries use rice and corn to cut the malt bill to save money and be able to sell beer cheap. Craft breweries don't even think about that as, an, as part of what we do. We make beer the way we want, with the ingredients we want, and sell it at a fair price, and we have no trouble whatsoever staying in business. People like craft beer. Hammer, bung, and bunghole is all our real terms. I've actually been paid to make beer for 19 years. Uh, I've been drinking beer for a little bit longer, but don't tell my mom. I've been wanting to open up my own brewery since the moment I came to Chicago, and I just hadn't met the right people. Then I met my business partner, John. The long story short is that his dad bought him a brewer for a day at a silent auction uh, to come in and brew with me. I'd never met him. So when John came in to brew for a day, he was like, eyes wide open, like, this is so cool. He's like, we should do this. And I'm like, I've been trying to do this on my own for eight years, you know? And he's like, well, I, I can raise money. I'm like, what? So two years later, we're in construction. So my, my business partner and my dear friend, I've only known him for like four years, you know, now, four years now. So we, had, we didn't really know each other. So it was, a, it was a huge gamble. It was really cool though. Barrel aged beers are really the, the most popular. Um, partly because if you look, they're 53.8 gallons, so you can only make so much. Uh, and it takes time, and they're rare, and, and they're unique.
No, it's 20 months. 20 months. 117. 20 months. The festival barrel aged beer. Uh, when I, I started it, uh, it was 20 beers and like 100 people. And it was like, hey, we should get these really rare barrel aged beers together and we should all taste them. So it was almost like I invited all my friends and we just had like a party. All right, glasses. This tastes like a. It's just like winning. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Fuck man, that's the last barrel too, right? Yeah. It's so, oh, so fucking good. Let's get a keg going. Imagine it cold and carbonated. It's gonna be even better. Eleven years later, we're a 2,500 person festival now. Uh, and we don't want to get big. We, we, I, I don't want to have a festival where there's long lines to try beer. I don't want a festival where it's too cramped. So we design it. People are like, you can sell more tickets. I'm like when they were in the room, they're like, there's room for like 400 people in here. I'm like, yeah, but then how would your experience be? Hi, how are you? Hi. Who are you checking in with? Like Fobab is to festivals what maybe, you know, Dark Lord is to beer or something like that. or. Bourbon County Stout releases to beer. I mean, those tickets sell quick and for a reason. It's, you know, those, the beers are just, they're profound and they're delicious and it's just, it's a fun, it's a fun day. Volunteers first. If you can make sure the pitchers are all lined up right in front where they need to be. The tables are cleaned off. If they're not using trays, if you're not using water bottles, if you're not using cans of PBR, please clear off the tables. We are not going to start pouring for the general public until 12 o'clock, but we're gonna start letting them in because the line is very long and they're standing in the rain. If we just get everybody to kind of shuffle this way. The line is gonna go that way. Yeah, there we go. That would be uh, beneficial to us all surviving today. So you'll see in about 10 minutes, there will be general admission and by member noon session people coming up. So let's all get ready. If you have to pee, I would do it now. is that um, it's a festival of barrel-aged beers. So it actually takes a really long time for people to make these beers, you know, eight months to a year. So when you're in the business of selling beer, it's, it's not cost-effective to have a beer sit on sit around in a barrel for a year. Uh, so what we have here is the largest collection of those beers on the planet. It's, uh, this works out perfectly. We're all friends. And we take the 16 sample tickets that we get, and we split them four ways. So we get 64 samples today. It's not about how much we drink, it's about how many varieties of beers we can experience. Currently on the menu, we have the Goose Island Cthulhu, Goose Island Backyard Rye, Lost Abbey Track 13, Lakefront Bourbon Barrel Age number one with cherries, vanilla, and all kinds of other awesome stuff. I love this place. As usual with these sort of events, uh, it's a great time to get together with the other local brewers. We're, we're always, you know, stuck in our breweries all the time, so we don't get to see each other as much as we might like, but when we get come together for these events, we get to catch up, we get to see what everybody else is doing. This year, when tickets went on sale at noon, uh, our ticket website said that there was 10,000 people on their website at noon trying to buy 2,000 tickets. Who would have thought? I sold 100 the first year. And everyone thought it was a joke. I did it on April 1st on a Tuesday night. Everyone's like, is this a joke? There's really gonna be like a barrel age festival? I'm like, come and find out. And 100 people did. And they were, now look at it. Cool. Best of show, best beer in the entire festival, over 230 entries is... La Breture from Bell's Brewery! <laughs> I always ask people when they ask me that about like Chicago, oh there's five brew pubs now or seven brew pubs and there's six production facilities, like when's the bubble gonna burst? I'm like, how many steakhouses are there? How many Italian restaurants are there? We could have a brew pub on every corner of every neighborhood in the city of Chicago and they would all be all work, as long as the beer's good, obviously because it's a local product, uh, it's a community. Uh, you want to shop 
where you live, you want to take care, you want to, the people that work there, live there. So you're supporting local. You're, you're buying a beer from the people that you live with in your community and you're supporting your community.